Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the OpenGL series where today we're going to be talking about rotations. So previously, if you've been following along in this series, we've covered lots of stuff like drawing triangle, how the graphics pipeline works, and we even touched on some of the different transformations that take place from the local coordinate system into world space, things like translation. So we're going to do a little bit of a recap here and then we'll get into rotations, understand just a little bit how they work and how to apply them in your graphics projects. So with that said, let's go ahead and cover the high level idea here. Now, again, the high level idea is just following along our graphics pipeline. Again, the first step being where we have our vertex specification. And again, this might be a little bit of a review for folks who are just hopping into the series or have been uh, otherwise following along where I have a bunch of vertices placed in space and these vertices here get acted on by the vertex shader so each individual one and then they undergo some transformation that takes them from their local coordinates to what's known as world space because every vertex when we first place it is specified in this sort of common coordinate system, just, you know, at the origin, we can sort of assume that's where they're being placed. And then we want to translate them out into the world based off of whatever transformation that we apply. So again, we've looked at translate, which let me go ahead and highlight uh, in our previous sample here, which moves a vertex sum offset here. In this particular case, we have a vector moving a vertex zero in the x direction, zero in the y, and then whatever our value is for the offset here. So that's just a little bit about what we've done. And to form this actual translation, we create a new matrix here and offset it by this vector. So that's the basic idea. We're doing a matrix multiply against some vector and moving things around. So if you need a little bit of a review on that, there's lots of great resources on the web. But what we're going to start talking about now is uh, various rotations. So you can find any sort of tutorial here. Uh, I'll just go ahead to this one here on transformations and I'll do a little bit of a review on matrices. I'd recommend reading through one of these resources here, learn OpenGL, watching my series, etc., uh, to again, just see what these matrices are here that we use for our transformations. So again, we have a scaling matrix, rotation, which we're gonna talk about, and we have three. And then as we talked about, uh, which is later here, probably in this tutorial, let's see if they have translation. Yes, here is translation, okay? And here's the special matrix that GLM creates for us. So we could do a deep dive in the math if folks are interested in some more of that style of things that might actually belong in a separate series, uh, but please let me know in the comments and subscribe otherwise. Uh, but let's just go ahead and focus on today's topic, which is uh, rotations. And the basic idea with rotations is these special matrices that we have here where we want to perform some rotation about some axis. Now go ahead and notice if we're going to rotate about the X axis, if I'm reading the columns here where this is the X column, which I'm highlighting, then, well, it's the identity. So it's not actually moving here. OK, but the actual work's going on in the Y column down this side here and the Z column here. I'm going to go ahead and focus on the Y axis rotation here. So let's just go ahead and write that one uh, out here just so we have it, which is cosine of theta zero, negative sine theta zero, zero, one, zero, zero, sine theta zero, cosine theta zero. And then the last column there is uninterrupted. So again, just to make this uh, clear here, these are sort of the columns that I'm reading here. This would be the X, this would be the Y, this would be the Z, and then this is our W here, okay, which allows us to do translation with these coordinates here. Okay, so I can read a little bit more about that. But what I just want you to focus on here is that this is our special rotation about the Y axis, okay, using Euler angle uh, rotations here. I'll move out so you can see that. So again, the thing to notice here, if I'm rotating some object about the Y axis is that the points aren't moving up and down here. Okay. So if I draw some little coordinate system here and I have some uh, shape here, which let me go ahead and get a different color uh, to represent this. Let's go ahead and do this in uh, say blue here. Uh, there we are. Oops. Right. All right. There we are. There's a blue. 
um, I would have some shape here. And if I'm rotating about the Y axis, again, that's rotating about this axis here. Okay, just at the very top here. So essentially, if I have some point here like this, again, the height's not going to change. The Y stays the same, but it's going to rotate all the way around this axis and sort of orbit that point. So that's the idea. That's how to, again, interpret these matrices and what the actual columns mean. Okay, so you can do a little bit of a deeper dive doing some reading on your own here, but I do want to get into the programming uh, portion of this. Now we are going to use the GLM matrix library and continue with that. So uh, it'll be handy to search for the documentation here. Uh, let's go ahead to the API documentation and I'm going to actually search for rotate here and let's make this a little bit bigger here and let's click on rotate. So the good news is you don't have to memorize those special rotation matrices. Now, if you are building your own library, that's probably useful. If you're doing other things like converting Euler angles to quaternions, again, it's important to understand that type of uh, mathematics, but we're just going to use uh, GLM, which has that built in and focus on some of these rotation functions here. So here's an example of a rotate function, which takes in the matrix. That's our input matrix here the angle, which is going to be in radians, but we can think of it in degrees and convert it. And then the axis that we're rotating about. So in our case, if we're rotating about the Y axis, we'd represent that with a vector zero, one, zero. Why zero, one, zero? Well, that's what this uh, vector is. Our, our Y axis is just a zero, one, zero here. Okay, zero, one, zero, okay? Uh, and then of course you could rotate about other vectors or you know make changes as you need but that's the basic idea so let's go ahead and see if we can implement this rotate into our existing code okay so that's where we're going uh, but as always i'd like to do a little bit of a review in case you're jumping into this series or haven't seen it in a while uh, but here is the main of the program that we've created we've got some steps for initializing our program so again that's things like setting up opengl for instance making sure our windows created and so on we've got our vertex specification which is again, just setting up some of our simple primitives. We've looked at vertex array objects, which sort of set up the state of what type of objects we're gonna draw. We've set up some vertex buffers, which populate our objects with the vertices. And we're using an indexed buffer strategy here to reuse our vertices to draw our quad. Uh, and then ultimately we create our graphics pipeline, which consists of a vertex and a fragment shader at the least. And then we have our main loop where we're doing our work here. Now for our input, we'll maybe add some input here so we can uh, demonstrate our rotation. But for now, we're just changing this global offset value. Uh, and let's go ahead and hop back here. And we have pre-draw. This is where we've been doing our transformations. Sometimes folks will just label this update or something uh, of that nature. But this is where we were previously doing our translate. And then we had another matrix here we we're multiplying in to get our perspective. And in particular, how we're passing in data into our vertex shader, which ultimately draws the final position of the vertices. Again, that's where our transformations have to take space place. Um, because again, we have our vertices that we specify, but in our vertex shader, they undergo these transformations. And we've already looked at the perspective uh, transformation so that we can draw a proper uh, square. Uh, so that's what's going on there. Here's our projection matrix. Again, here it is uh, set up here. Uh, and I've already set up a model uh, matrix here. And then finally, uh, we have our draw, which we're not going to really need to play with today, but that's basically just taking all of our data. And as soon as we issue the GL draw all elements call, that runs our graphics pipeline. So it runs all of our vertices that are currently bound in our vertex buffer object uh, through our graphics pipeline, performing all of the transformations as needed. OK, so with that review out of the way, let's go ahead and start looking at implementing a rotation here. Uh, so what we're going to go ahead and do is create another matrix here. And I'm just going to call this rotate. Uh, and do GLM uh, rotate here. Uh, and then the, the matrix that we want to rotate about here, uh, well, when we were doing our translation, we were just doing this according to the identity and then storing it in translate. So let's kind of uh, regroup things here. So what I want to actually do instead of translate, I want this to be our model uh, matrix here. 
Okay, so basically it's going to perform a series of maybe translations, rotations, etc. Uh, that take place here. Okay, so this is our initial translate that we're doing here uh, to set up our uh, scene. Our rotation here will apply to our model matrix. And again, we can just store this, uh, update our model here. Uh, that's how I'll do it. I'll keep it indented like this. Uh, and then the things that we needed were our um, degree that we're going to rotate about. So we might just say like 45 degrees, for instance. Uh, and again, this has to be in radians. Uh, so GLM radians will do the trick there. And the axis that we want to rotate about. So let's go ahead and rotate about the uh, Y axis. So 1.0, 1.0F. And let's go ahead and take a look at that. Now I've updated the variable uh, translate, so let's make sure that I uh, pass in the correct matrix here. So that'll be the model matrix here. And I think that should do the trick for us. Uh, let's go ahead and compile, see if we made any silly mistakes. No mistakes. Uh, and just a quick review of our shaders as well, uh, which I think we should do. Uh, let's go ahead and look at our shaders, looking at the vertex shader. Again, which is taking in position and colors. We've got our model matrix, which will hold our transformations and the projection. And again, we're doing our whatever our position of our vertice is that's coming in from the vertex specification. So again, positions just up here, our vertices, the X, Y, and Z positions in a buffer. The model matrix, that's our translation or series of things that we perform on our CPU and pass in here. And then lastly, the projection. So again, we're reading right to left as far as the sort of order that the uh, transformations are applied. Okay, so just something to keep in mind there. Uh, I'll go ahead and just, let's just go ahead and briefly show you the fragment shader. Nothing's really changing here. We're just applying the colors. Okay, so we're not doing anything interesting quite yet. Uh, so again, this compiles successfully here. Uh, let me move out of the way so you can see the full compile command. If you're on Linux, otherwise watch the other videos on my series for Mac. Uh, if you need, and let's go ahead and run this program here. Okay, now if I go ahead and uh, update this, I've got to push back here. You'll you'll ultimately see that our shape is moving somewhere. It's in front of the screen here, and it is rotated 45 degrees here. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, in fact, that was quite easy here. So let's add a little bit more to it here. So again, up and down is just modifying our translation, but let's use the left and the right key so that we can rotate about some axis here. Okay. So what I'm going to go ahead and do here is just modify. And again, I'm just creating a global variable here, uh, not because it's the best thing in the world to do, but because it's the simplest. So uh, again, G for global. Again, you'd probably want to encapsulate these in some sort of struct or per object. That would be a common thing to do. Uh, I'm just going to call this rotate. We're going to start it off at zero here. Uh, and again, the U in front of rotate is because I'm usually setting these up with a uniform variable. Uh, so I'm just trying to be disciplined about that. Uh, and our rotation here, we're going to actually just change this to the global variable underscore U rotate. Uh, and again, being disciplined with the naming of your variables helps your uh, IntelliSense and these types of things <laughs> be a little bit easier. So uh, update our model. Uh, matrix by applying a rotation uh, after our translation. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and leave that as is. Uh, and now let's go ahead and we need to go into our input. So again, that's going to be from our main loop. So it's going to travel into there, add into our input. And let's update some of our uh, keys here. So the scan code for uh, left, let's go ahead and update the rotates here to do minus equal 0 0.01. And we'll go ahead and update. Uh, actually, let me update our print statement here just so we can get a little bit of debugging. Uh, you rotate. OK. And make sure that we print out the right variable there. OK, so that's looking pretty good here. And let's go ahead and handle our right key. And again, these scan codes are from SDL, uh, and that should do the trick here. Okay, so let's go ahead and give this a compile, see if we made any mistakes. Nothing yet. Uh, and let's go ahead and move in our code. Uh, and again, let's uh, 
press down here. Uh, now again, I've got to press down. You'll notice my objects being offset backwards. Again, if you need a reminder, you can kind of do the right hand rule. Z positive is facing out of the screen. Z negative uh, inwards. So if our camera is looking down the screen, that's why we've got to push the object back. And now I'm going to try uh, left here. Um, and it is rotating just very slowly here. <laughs> so let's go ahead and give that another try here. Uh, let's do something like, let's make this 10 times as fast here. 0.1. There we go. That should give us a more uh, convincing rotate. Recompile. Rerun. And let me bring the window in for you here. Push our object into the screen here. And now I'm going to hold down the left key and rotate. And we can see that our object is rotating. Again, very slowly, but it's doing the job here. Uh, let's speed that up one more time, and then we'll get ready to wrap that up. Let's just make this 1.0. Because, uh, again, it's got to go 100, uh, 360 degrees to do a full rotation, uh, uh, you know, which is uh, a journey. <laughs> so let's go ahead and, uh, yet again, push this into the screen a little bit, and then we can see a nice rotating primitive. Uh, let's go the other way. Let's hold down R here. And we can see our object rotating here and flipping around here. So that's quite nice here. And you can see the actual uh, degrees updating there. We might want to actually cap that value to 360, but you get the idea here. And we can go the other direction. Now, again, it is important here, uh, and maybe I'll play around with this in the next lesson, because I think this is enough uh, for this one here, that we are doing the order of our transformations uh, correctly here. So just something to keep in mind with OpenGL. and. In general, just be very careful with your operations. Again, I always tell folks if they're not seeing their objects uh, on the screen here. Um, so for instance, if I push up and down, it's usually because the object might be behind you. So you got to think about your coordinate system. Uh, and then sometimes you have to be careful if you're not getting expected behavior that your transformations uh, are applied in the correct order. All right, folks. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed this lesson here. I've kind of had to put in the triangle here or the square rotating here. Uh, and I hope you'll go ahead and consider trying this out and letting me know in the discussion if you have any other questions here. And as always, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss these lessons. And as always, again, thank you for your time and attention. I'll look forward to seeing you in that next OpenGL video.